Hello, in this section, I will talk about cardio, cardioplegia. Uh, so, we will discuss what exactly is cardioplegia, why do we do it, and what are the different solutions which are used for cardioplegia, the types of cardioplegia, uh, what is the contraindication, what are the special monitoring that we need to do, everything we will discuss in this section. So, let us start with a discussion that what exactly is cardioplegia? What is cardioplegia? Now, cardioplegia is a, a pharmacological therapy in which we give some solution and which put the heart temporarily in a arrest to protect the heart from ischemic injury during cardiac surgery. So, it's a pharmacological uh, therapy which is used to temporarily put the heart in a arrest so that ischemic injury to the heart is prevented during cardiac surgery. So, how do I define it in proper wordings. So, definition would be that cardioplegia is a pharmacological therapy, is a pharmacological therapy administered during cardiac surgery, given during, administered during cardiac surgery to intentionally, to intentionally and temporarily put heart in standstill to intentionally and temporarily, temporarily put heart in stance, uh, standstill, heart in arrest. Okay. So, each and every point of this definition is important. First, cardioplegia is a pharmacological therapy. So, there is some agent which is used for cardioplegia. Then it is administered during cardiac surgery through different cannulation, anti-grade and retrograde which we will discuss and we intentionally put it and temporarily it is for short time period the heart goes into arrest and this happens during cardiac surgery with a definite goal. So, what is the history of cardioplegia? Who was the first person and when the first cardioplegia was introduced? Now, uh, today also most of the cardioplegic solutions are potassium based and the first solution which was used by Dr. Mel Rose in 1941 was also a potassium based cardioplegic solution or oh, 1950s I mean. So, in early 1950s, in early 1950s, first solution, first solution was used by Dr. Melrose, Melrose and in this high level of potassium citrate was used. So, high levels of potassium citrate was used for reversible uh, cardiac arrest, reversible cardiac arrest. So, what is the, uh, let us say, mechanism by which this potassium containing fluid put the heart into diastolic arrest? So, what is the mechanism? To understand the mechanism, we need to be aware of the action potential of a uh, uh, myocyte. How does the action potential, what are the different channels which opens during propagation of a action potential. So, we all know that <coughs> there is there is a something called resting membrane potential, then the action potential that is that is what is depolarization and then your early then late depolarization and then repolarization happen. So, this is a normal cycle which a myocyte goes through and for this different channels open. So, sodium and calcium is mainly responsible for depolarization and potassium is mainly responsible for repolarization. So, by shifting the balance of potassium in extra and intracellular part of the myocardial cell, we can stop this repolarization to happen and put the heart temporarily into diastolic arrest. Right? No repolarization will happen, the heart will get arrested in diastole. So, what is the mechanism? So, when we put a potassium containing fluid, an influx, an influx of potassium depolarizes depolarizes the myocardium, myocardium, myocardial membrane causing contraction, causing contraction and thus release 
and subsequent sequestration of sod calcium. S release and subsequent sequestration of calcium ions. This results in diastole arrest. So, let me explain it in little more. Uh, so, we all know that resting membrane potential is minus 85 millivolt and when the influx of sodium happens, influx of sodium happens, when the sodium channel opens, then the potential changes to minus 30 to minus 30 millivolt and this is what is depolarization, depolarization. So, sodium channel is responsible for depolarization. Then L type calcium channel opens at certain uh, membrane potential, L type calcium channel opens and this maintains the depolarization, this maintains, this slows the repolarization, this maintains the depolarization. Now, what we do, we uh, give the cardioplegic solution that has potassium. So, potassium, increase in potassium causes persistence, depol persistence of depolarization, persistence of depolarization because it will change the potassium composition across the cell, across the cell. So, increased potassium causes the persistence of depolarization and persistence of depolarization means no repolarization. So, no repolarization results in diastolic arrest, diastolic arrest, okay. So, this results in diastolic arrest. So, what is the goal? Why do we put the heart in diastolic arrest? What is the goal? So, when the heart will goes, go into diastolic arrest, there would be no or minimal risk of ischemic injury uh, to the heart when the uh, when cardiac surgery is being performed. Plus, we will get a motionless, bloodless field. All this will give us a lot of benefits. So, goal is to reduce, is to reduce myocardial oxygen demand by putting the electrical silence in the heart, electrical quiescence we call it. So, to reduce the myocardial oxygen demand. So, how do we decrease the myocardial oxygen demand? By electrical uh, stilling of the heart. So, electrical, electrical quiescence or silence we call it. And the second thing is, is uh, how do uh, ischemic injury is prevented? Is by cooling of heart cooling of heart to reduce ischemic effect, reduce ischemic effect. So, all this will lead to cardioprotection, bloodless and motionless field. So, all this will lead to cardioprotection and bloodless, bloodless and motionless motionless field, right. So, we will get ca cardio protection, bloodless and motionless field, which is very important during cardiac surgery. And definitely, you must have understood that the cardioplegia is used only when we are getting the cardiac surgery done on pump, right. We put the heart in standstill on pump. And most of the cardioplegic solution has potassium, but it is not only potassium containing cardioplegic solution. I mean, apart from potassium, the cardioplegic solution also has your other ions like magnesium, calcium and all are put in such a composition that the contractility of the heart is reduced. Apart from this, sometimes glucose is added to provide nutrition to the myocardial cells, right. So, so different, different compositions are, is there of cardioplegic solution uh, to put the heart in a diastolic arrest and also to nourish the heart, okay, okay. Now, let us talk about the types of cardioplegia. Now, cardioplegia is divided into how we administer the anti-grade and the retrograde. So, types are divided into how it is administered, how it is administered, right? And that is on two types it will be divided, that is anti-grade, anti-grade and retrograde, retrograde. Right. Okay. So, 
Uh, another way in which cardioplegia can be divided is type of solution which we are using. So, type of solution, type of solution. Now, we have single administration solution, we have multiple dosing solution, we have blood containing solution, we have crystallite containing solution. So, type of solution also. So, let us first discuss uh, the division of cardioplegia on the basis of how it is administered, anti-grade, retrograde. So, what do I mean by anti-grade cardioplegia, anti-grade cardioplegia? Now, we mean by this that solution is administered in such a way that it flows along the normal circulation of the heart, along the right and left coronary artery. It is administered in such a way that it flows, I mean it is administered in aorta, the proximal aorta from where the right and left coronary artery originates. So, the solution flows along with the blood in right and from right and left coronary artery and it uh, it provides the it put the heart in the standstill right so that's anti grade cardioplegia so anti grade cardioplegia means solution means solution runs down solution runs down the right and left coronary artery right and left coronary artery distribution coronary artery distribution right okay and where do we put the solution in anti-grade uh, cardioplegia as i said in aorta proximal aorta